Hey guys, this is Hetu and welcome or welcome back to Tilkiwe Labs. So today we will look at another scenario of ETL validation or ETL testing, uh, wherein uh, wherein we, we are we are going to use the Python pandas to perform some of the validation, right? So one thing uh, that you guys uh, should be aware that whenever we have the scope of file, either as a source or target, where we have the data in the file, right? In that case, uh, we have to we have to leverage the scripting tool, right, guys? So either you have to use the cell scripting, or you have to use some um, some Python, or some sort of uh, you know uh, programming language that we have to use, right? And pandas being one of the very very uh, lightweight and very fast uh, very fast uh, you know uh, inbuilt uh, Python library. Uh, which actually gives excellent feature for us so that's the reason we normally use python pandas to do all those kind of validation right so let's uh, start then and we will see this kind of scenarios right so and this is also very very important from the interview point of view guys right and uh, not only exact question and if you you get some sort of this kind of scenario then you can actually very well correlate uh, because there is always challenge uh, with validating the data in the file system right because uh, if you have the database you can very well use the SQL query to perform or to actually get some sort of validation done uh, using the SQL query but in in file it's very difficult right especially when we have the huge amount of data in the file of millions of records in the file in that case even opening the file on your desktop is not possible sometime right because uh, it's like 10 dv 10 gb gigabytes of data uh, then the, your uh, system will not be able to uh, open it up even right in that case we use actually python pandas which is very very efficient right and uh, so let's let's try to look at this scenario and uh, how do we use the pandas here and we'll be able to get some understanding hopefully yeah so the scenario is given a source system as database so we have guys uh, so here we are not actually uh, processing anything we are just simply taking source and target because i assume that you know there is an in between transformation which is happening as part of etl so uh, we are assuming that right so the source and target because as part of our testing we generally have to actually verify source and target and uh, that is what the black box testing right and whenever you have to actually go the mapping validation or you know etl process validation and all that is a bit of uh, you know you can say the white box testing or that generally is uh, uh, expected when uh, i mean depends on the project to project but normally we actually validate source and target in the in the normal uh, normal uh, you know uh, projects basically right so that's the reason we have just considered here source as a database and target as a file and uh, it's more specifically we are actually loading after transformation we are loading into a file which is csv file in our case right so the question is how do you perform uh, the below validation the first validation is verify a filter transformation in etl process right so when i say filter transformation it essentially is a kind of uh, active transformation right which means it actually trying to filter out some record when the etl process runs uh, between source and target and at the end when it loads into target there are obviously some of the records which are actually uh, which are filtered right which will not be part of your um, target right so in this case employees so which the filter condition is employees from the sales department should not be loaded in the target right so actually what we have to validate we have to actually take the source i mean we have to validate uh, the the source system which is database and make sure that the count okay in our source and target is same after removing I mean after discounting the sales department right and uh, so let's try to see that how we can actually validate it right so first of all so so what we will do is we will go directly to the source so our source is let's say source is our SQL workbench right now I mean basically the MySQL 
MySQL database, right? We have a table. I have just created it already here. Let's see what all the things we do have, right? So, so we have employee number, employee name, department name. So, what exactly our um, you know filter condition is? We don't want the data from the cell. So, basically, these two should not be loaded in my target, right? So then, how many should be loaded? That we have to check. So first of all, what we have to do is we have to make sure we don't have sales data. Yeah, we don't have the department name as sales in my uh, in my target, right? So that should be my first thing that I have to verify, right? If somehow this sales data is making into my target table, then there is problem, right? So first of all, the first thing that I'm going to my uh, target, which is my CSV file, and I want to verify uh, whether we have my sales data or not. Here it is very easy to see because we have the lesser amount of data, but in real scenario, uh, in, in where millions of records are there, we have to run all these queries, guys, right? So let's go to go to the target. So I will what I will do. I will just import pandas as pd. This is the normal scenario, normal line that we write. Now what I'm going to do? I'm going to say data frame. I'm going to actually store the uh, read this file and store into data frame, right? So read csv. What is that file name? C employee dot csv. All right. Now let's go to the next line. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just say DF. I just want to see what all the columns we have now. Yeah. So we have employee name, same, exactly the same name, uh, same column which we have. Now, if you can check uh, here actually, right? So we don't have sales data here, right? Which means this is correct. Okay. Means which means filter is happening, and we are actually able to uh, make sure that, that there is filter happening. But in this case, we have very low record, uh, means very less record. That's why you can see in, in a query uh, here only in the file itself, right? But as I said that we have huge amount of data, then what exactly we have to do? So we have to actually validate uh, what we have to actually validate whether the department name should not have the sales data, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to, if I can get the unique department name and ensure we don't have the sales in that and then we are good, right? So what I will do is I will just take this particular column, right? So DPT name, right? And then I have one function in pandas that actually we can use unique function. Okay, this is the unique function, guys. And then if I run it, I see that in the array format, right? So IT is there, HR is there, finance is there. We don't have sales here, which means we are good, right? Because we don't want this sales. Okay. This is the first step, right? Which means our uh, sales data is already uh, already getting filtered out. Now, let's go back to another validation. What we want to do is basically here, if I if I say, hmm, if I say select, unique is nothing but distinct, guys, right? So distinct in uh, SQL. So distinct department DPT number Oh, sorry, DPT name. Okay, and I want to filter it, so I will say where department name should not be there, should not be sales, right? That's what I'm saying. So I want to get all the distinct department number except sales, right? In this case, I should actually get the same. Okay, one second. So I should actually get. 3 IT HR finance right the same thing that we got it here right which means our validation is working fine from the uniqueness point of view yeah fine so the filter is working fine we are good about it but we are not sure right we are not sure how if there is any other records are dropping or not in that case we have to actually do a count check as well right so I would show you here another um, condition what we want to check basically here is uh, whether our count between source and target after filter is correct or not, right? So ideally, what should be uh, the count? So ideally, what should be the count, guys? So let if I can say, if I say select counts star except cells, then how many are there in the source that we have to just take it? So we have nine records, right? Now, 
in my target, I should exactly get nine records, right? I should not get more than nine records, right? I should exactly get nine records. Then, um, you know, the data is correct, okay? Now, instead of this, what I can say is df, uh, df dot, I can just say guys count, okay? So then see what it gives you. So it's giving you eight, right? Eight. Why it is giving you eight? Is there any problem? One second. Why it's nine? Okay, let me let me just see it. Something mismatch between my source and target. Okay, Adam, Peter, Christopher, Alan. Oh, 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 okay, okay. Mank is there three times actually. But in my, I mean, actually, I it should not have three times. In fact, in fact, here it's two times only, right? So let me make it three times as well because um, <laughs> this is the issue when I actually entered, right, the file. Now let's, I updated it. Let me go back again and I will read it again. All right, I read the file. Now I can say it's coming as nine. Okay, fine. So uh, we are good here, guys, right? Because we just wanted to make sure, you know, we have the unique record. I mean, we have the right count. But in this case, if you see that, it's actually giving you count for each of this particular column, right? Which means you have to actually consider the highest count okay because if i show you here guys if i have somewhere null value for example here let's say i have just removed it two two of them then how many counts i should get under department i should actually get two less which means seven it should have seven so i have to again read it guys okay in the data frame now see we have got seven, right? Which means actually uh, the whole record, actually the whole record which is having value, at least one of the column is having value, which means that is a that is a one record, right? So in this case, it's nine, so which is correct actually, okay? But in SQL, SQL also, I mean, you can actually get the count of each of this um, uh, each of these columns, right? Uh, something like this we can do isn't it something like this count employee M P number something like this we can do isn't it like let's say hmm? count row this one this one this one okay all right mp name right let's see the EPT name. Okay. See guys, same thing, right? Because we are getting here nine. Okay. Uh, again, right? I mean, in file we have actually removed the S2. That's why it's coming. But yeah, you see that this is the way how we can good. So uh, when I say count star uh, in SQL, it actually checks if at least one of the column is having. So it basically give the row count, right? If one of the column is not null, then in that case, it will actually give you the count. Okay. So, I uh, hope you are able to understand this, how the filter condition works. So, this kind of scenarios, right? I mean, the interviewer can basically ask you, right? How do you validate the filter condition? So, you have to actually do, when you get the filter condition, you have to actually do this two kind of validation, right? Two, two type of validation and then you are good. All right. So, that's all guys. I think uh, we will uh, cover some more scenarios basically, right? And uh, I just wanted to give you this kind of flavor because uh, most of the time, you know, uh, now people have started asking you, you know, what is uh, how do you verify this kind of scenario then it's very important that you understand it right and on top of that you can actually uh, talk about how do you actually use the pandas library to verify this kind of uh, you know scenarios and then it is super 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 good right so that's the reason um, this entire uh, panda series right I'll try to come up with more and more scenarios, right? And let's uh, grab it. And meanwhile, guys, uh, one more request. Um, if you are, uh, you have any questions, uh, comments, you feel free to uh, put in the comment section. And also don't forget to like and subscribe it uh, if you're watching it first time. 
and share with your friends because uh, you know that sharing is caring if we share our knowledge then it will grow right and if you keep it with you only uh, uh, it, it's uh, it's not good right for no, neither you for nor your uh, other people as well right so that's the reason uh, you know uh, I wanted to this uh, I wanted to make this series so that it can help everybody in our community ETL testing community and uh, feel free to ask me any question uh, or any specific scenarios that you want me to cover you just let me know I'm happy to help you guys okay and uh, yeah uh, that's all for this video see you soon with another video until then god bless you and uh, bye